Welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I'm going to do a product review. I just got a brand new desktop laser printer. It's the HP M454 Pro. And I'm going to show you how I opened it up, how I set it up, and how I configured the software. It's an excellent printer so far from my usage of it. And I just wanted to show everybody, you know, exactly what it looks like. I think it's worthwhile considering. It's a pretty reasonable price. I also got the extra 550 page tray, tray number three, that goes on the bottom of it. I'm gonna be buying the higher capacity toner. Right now I just have the starter toner that came with it, which I think gives me anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 pages. But that's okay, the higher capacity one is several times that. And it's not that expensive. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in more detail. I do want to talk about some of the special features up front though. For example, you can actually walk up to it with a USB stick and have on there a document that's formatted in just about any type of application format that there is. Uh, Word, PowerPoint, uh, just a regular Adobe. Whatever it is you happen to have, it seems to, the list is quite extensive. Also, it supports using an iPhone. So if you have a phone, or not just iPhone, but any smartphone, and you walk up to it with one of the print functions that are enabled using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, it supports both, you can actually print right from your phone right to the printer. There is a little bit of a trick to that. You have to make sure you configure the printer right. As I'm showing here on the screen, there's an actual page where you configure that it actually is available to work, and there's a little password you have to get off of that. I have it blocked out in this case, but you can set it to wherever you want, or you let it more preferably choose a random one. It's just a number, like a eight or nine digit number. So let's get into it. Let me start off by showing you how to open up the box and get it installed. Stick around to the last end though, because I'm gonna be showing you some of the output prints that I got out of it, and some of them are really, really good. Okay, here's the printer in its box, and there's a picture here that says it should lie down and pull it out sideways. It doesn't really give me a direction on the box. I'm assuming that this picture is accurate. So I'm going to lie it down this way. So I guess I'll start by cutting open the side here and pulling it out like they suggest. It says heavy and it's right. I put it on a scale, it comes out just under 50 pounds, like 49.3 pounds. Got some papers. What's this cable? Oh, it's a USB. USB Type B to USB Type A. USB 2.0. And it's like they give you some warnings. Let's see. The instructions probably on how to take it out of here. Well, it looks like they also have a power cord. Grabbing the bottom here. To do it right there. And there it is. Now, before I put it up on the table, I'm going to put the third tray that I bought as an accessory. So, this is going to have to go up on the table there, but before I put the printer up there, I'm going to put the third tray up there first. Let me pull this out of the way here so I can get the tray, the third tray. Some more papers on top. Looks like the installation instructions. This is very light compared to the printer. I didn't weigh it, but it feels like it's maybe 10 pounds at the most. Yeah, you can do it one hand. So here's the third tray right here. Okay. So let's get these ends off of this first. And here's the, the tray. I did read the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. It's, there's no screws involved, actually. Let me try to put it the way they described it. coming apart. So it says to bring this up onto the table. This goes first. And the table is big enough. That's good. Now there's supposed to be little pegs here. These little steel pegs here. There's two of them. And those are the guides that I have to use to lock it down. It looks like it has an I.O. connector here that it'll come down on top of. Okay, let's see if I can get this up here. I'll take the plastic bag the rest of the way off. What does the bottom look like anyway? I'm going to take this tray out just so it's not in the way. And then I should have the connector here and where the pegs are going to go will be along the side. Now let's get this guy heaved up. 
It's a little bit on the heavy side, but I got it in. Now the hardware is supposed to automatically recognize it. Once I turn the power on, I need to put paper in the trays. So I'll put a little bit of paper in both. Put some paper in this tray. So it has these little clips here, blue clips. You got to push them, open it up wide, put some paper in, and then we'll make sure it's pushed up against the paper. So that takes care of that tray. And then I'll put some more paper in here. And there we go, that's in. And I'll put this tray in. Looks like we have some peels here. I don't think we'll hear anything, but a little bit. Then it has a little display up here, the top here. Looks like it has a peel too. It looks like we have tape here. I think that's about it. We got this thing here to catch the paper. And I think that's it. Let me hook it up, plug it in, and we'll see what happens. So I turned it around on the table a little bit here so I can connect up the power cable. I won't connect the network cable up yet until I do some initial configuration of it. So let me get the power cable connected here. Let me pull it, turn it back around. I'll plug it in and then we'll do some configuration. You should see it on the, on the top panel there when I do it. Now I do want to take advantage of a feature that this printer has where it can store jobs on a USB. It recommends having a USB type A at least 16 gigabytes. I have a 64 gig team group one here that I'm going to put into the USB connector on the back. And you're supposed to do that before you power it on. So that's what I'm doing right now. So in addition to the ethernet jack, it has two USB connectors. The type B here is meant to connect it directly to a PC. And then this type A looks like a 3.0. That's where I'm going to put this little plug here. So it's going to be a nice little low profile 3.0 USB. So I'll come here at the power on switch. See what it goes through here. Okay, it's supposed to be a touch screen, so it says English. I'll hit English. It's USA. I'll hit that. It is self-managed. Self-managed environment is selected. Printer update on to change. Leave it that way. Finish setup. It's directing me to a web page, so I'll have to go there and see what they want me to do next. Oh, now it's uh, doing printer is initializing. Please wait. It's calibrating. It smells like a new device, a new electronic piece of equipment right now. It says general HT, HP cartridges are installed. I expect so, that's how it was. And it's up. Okay, now I wanna change configuration a little bit here. Let me click setup. Looks like a little thing there. The IP address. Do I wanna to connect to a wireless? No, I don't. So I click the little uh, thing again. Now it says ethernet settings. So I'll do IP settings. I don't want automatic, I want manual. I'm doing a static address. Let's do the IP address first. Okay, so now I've set my IP address. Let me set the subnet mask. The default gateway. Okay, that's my default gateway. I'll leave it for that because that should give us an automatic DNS. I'll do an apply. It's updating my status right now. Now I can back up. And now we'll connect the Ethernet cable, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, what I did is I went to the printer's webpage, the IP address that I manually put in earlier. Let's take a look at some of the important things to do here. I would say starting with the network, make sure that you have the network configured properly. In particular, you're going to make sure that the uh, network identification is what you wanted it to be. I changed mine to HP 454 color. It was some random number in the front of that before, <laughs> so I didn't like that. Network protocols, it was set for both IP version 4 and version 6. I changed it to IP version 4. Then I went to the wired and make sure that my uh, status is proper, that it has everything in it that I set it up, the IP address, subnet mask. I preferred DNS, and then I looked. This is how you would change the IP configuration. Let's say if you forgot to put your DNS address in here, both the primary and the secondary, this is where you would set it. Although I could have set that on the printer itself. Then let's take a look at the tools. Printer information. If you want, you can actually print it out by clicking on this little button down at the bottom here. You can restart the printer if you like, do a power cycle. I suggest, highly suggest this. Check for printer updates, firmware updates. It'll go and show you what version of firmware you currently have. Click on this little button called Check Now. It's gonna go out, see if there's a newer firmware. I have the latest firmware, so that it didn't have to do anything. And then you can play around with this. You can uh, you know, print out various reports. 
in the settings, you can actually change things like the shutdown after how many hours, if you'd like. How long do you want to wait before it goes into sleep mode? Originally, it was set for one minute. I changed mine to five minutes. You can look at your preferences, general printer settings. No need to touch any of this. You can change the date and time. Now, right now, it looks like it's set for date of 1-1-2014. So I need to update this. So what I'll do is, does it have a time server thing down here? So one of my favorites on this is time.nist.gov. As long as your DNS is set properly, it should be able to find that. How many seconds to wait? How often to synchronize? I would take the defaults on that. Apply. And look what it did. It caught the date and time, although it got the time zone wrong. So I have to change that. So if I come down and look for the time zone. So if I come down here to advanced and click on that, I should see that the time zone is currently set for Casablanca, Monrovia. I don't want that. If I come down here and find uh, Eastern U.S. and Canada. Greenwich Mean Time minus five hours. I'll apply that. Click OK. And now it's got the correct time. I think that's all we need to really cover on this. There are a lot of things in here you can do. You can actually force it to print one of these reports if you'd like. And you can see what it looks like as your first print before you install the drivers into Windows, for example. Now I need to enable this printer under Windows. So I've come into the control panel, all control panel items, devices, and printers. And I'm going to say, add a printer. It found the 453-4. Let me go ahead though, however, and try doing it manually. So I'm going to tell it to pick a TCP IP printer that I've set up. I'm going to give it the IP address. And now it's giving me a choice of printers. I don't see it listed here. So let me do a Windows update. Okay, let's see what it found now. If I go back to HP. It looks like all it found was this 453-4 PCL. Now let me try it, see what happens. I'll just change the name, however. Okay, let's see what it says here. Do not share this printer. Next. I'll set it as a default, so I'll take that. Let me print a test page. Okay, that worked fine. I'll put up on the screen here uh, the copy of the test page. So we're all done.